Welcome to the first official unit in my relearning art series where I'm going back to the very beginning of character drawing so I can learn the skills that I've always wanted to. If you haven't seen my previous video where I outlined what my plan is going to be, I'll link that in the description. It also includes a full tour of all of my old sketchbooks. Either way, the first unit is all about drawing anatomy where I'm going to practice figure drawing for both feminine and masculine figures. And I have to admit, I don't have very much experience with drawing masculine characters, like, at all. So that'll probably be a bit more of a challenge for me. I should also, while we're being honest here, admit that this is my second time filming this intro today. And I originally filmed it on the first day of this unit. It's now the third day of this unit. Something happened. So we're doing it again. All right, so let's talk about background because my background with drawing bodies is a little bit all over the place. When I first got a drawing book, I used to actually use the guidelines to map out the body or the pose before I would draw it. But I also used to draw with plain printer paper, mechanical pencils, and really terrible erasers. So. I would get really annoyed when those lines that I drew to make sure everything was accurate wouldn't erase properly and I'd end up with a messy drawing with tons of random lines and erasers on it. So my solution to this, because I didn't know anything, was to just not do the part where I'd map out the body or the pose and I'd only draw what I wanted to be visible in the end. And this became a habit that I will admit I didn't drop until embarrassingly recently, unfortunately. Because of this, I also didn't usually pursue more complex or interesting poses, so my drawings became pretty static and bland. And to remedy that, I kind of just started drawing headshots, like I wouldn't draw anything below the shoulders. So that made my art even more boring. So for the next two weeks, I'm gonna go all the way back to the beginning of drawing anatomy so that I can make a habit out of drawing accurate bodies for my characters. My expectations going into this is that I'll probably start off pretty weak. I haven't done this in a while, but honestly, that's okay because the goal of this unit and every other unit isn't to fully master the concept in two weeks. I know that's unrealistic. What I want to do is build a solid foundation so that the more I draw, the better I get consistently. As I mentioned in my previous video, I'm going to be using YouTube videos as source material for learning and I'm going to be aiming for at least 15 to 30 minutes of practice every day so that I can build a consistent habit. Then at the end of the unit, I'm actually assigning myself a little project so that I can show what I've learned so far. But anyway, how about we actually get started? All right, starting off with the first week, I just began by watching a video tutorial on a method on how to draw bodies. This was the first of a few that I had lined up to watch. And then I followed along using my sketchbook so that I could create my own references. And then I decided to do this little tracing exercise um, where I just took some free photos and I traced over them using that method to get a feel for the proportions and try to get as accurate as I possibly could. And I tried to use a variety of poses. This is only three of them. Then on day two, I decided to pull out my drawing tablet. Gotta love this one. It's got plenty of very long cords. I have a very small space. It can get a little bit messy. But anyway, I just wanted to reinforce the concepts that I had learned the day before. So I decided to do a little exercise where I drew each pose from memory. And then I checked with my sketchbook notes and then drew the more accurate version. So nothing too complicated here. I just started with like the frontal position and then moved on to the side, three quarter view, and then one for each curve that I had learned in the previous video. But 
I actually did find that I did make a few mistakes, which is why I think this exercise was a good idea because it would kind of cement those understandings of proportions and shapes in my head a little bit further if I knew what the mistakes I felt drawn to do were when I got started. And then that way I could correct them and give myself a little bit of a reference for what's actually the more accurate version compared to what I feel compelled to start doing. And on day three, I learned a new method from another artist with a different video tutorial. And then I followed along with my sketchbooks just as I did before and took my own reference notes. I didn't do a lot of reinforcement this day. I really just focused on learning their method. So this is really all that I did on this day. And then when it came to day four, I wanted to reinforce those concepts once again. So I decided to look up some references just for 3D shapes. And then I spent some time drawing out those 3D shapes in my sketchbook. The last video that I had watched before this really emphasized the importance of cylinders and learning how they can connect to make limbs like arms and legs. So I tried my best to practice those shapes and put them in relation to each other so that I would know how that worked and just to train my hand a little bit better. And then on the same day, I just went to Google and I looked up a couple of pose references and just quickly sketched out those poses using the method that I had learned from that previous video. And then I decided to end off the week by pulling out my drawing tablet once again and doing the tracing exercise that I had in the beginning of the unit. And I had a little surprise visitor. I had no clue she was there. <laughs> so for this exercise, I just used that method from the second video tutorial that I watched. I found that it was easier with this one to break down the parts, especially in the torso and kind of imagine the movement. I also felt like in some of the more complex poses that I was practicing with, like here where he's sitting down, it was easier to imagine the hips rather than just the upper torso. But I did use the same 10 photos that I had used the first time that I did this exercise just to keep some consistency and not confuse myself while I try to get the proportions down. And then I started the second week with another new tutorial with a different method to use. And I did just do that same thing where I followed along with my sketchbook and made some notes and that was really it for this day. All right, so it's now Tuesday of the second week. I'm calling this day seven because I'm not counting weekends actually. I'm drawing sometimes on weekends, but I'm not filming it. I don't really want to overdo it. I have heard some people talking about how when they force themselves to draw every day or like film themselves drawing every day, that can lead to a bit of burnout. So I'm just keeping that to the weekdays, but 
Doesn't mean I won't share if I draw a little bit on weekends. So I did do a little bit of drawing this past Sunday. I mostly just practiced the shapes again. And then I used some of my own pictures as references for poses. So that was kind of fun. Um, definitely went a lot better than previous times I've done that before learning these concepts. And I thought, oh, like, I'm my best reference. So I'll draw just my own pose from a picture I took and I'll use that. And then I end up getting like lost and confused. But this time, <laughs> this time not so much. So this unit, I actually still have one more video tutorial to try out. Out of all the ones I've done so far, I have to say I think I like the blue biscuits method the best. Mostly because I like how they break the torso down into three shapes instead of two. I feel like it's easier on side or like angled angled um, angles, I don't know, to, <laughs> to picture the movement in the body, um, whereas like the ones that are just kind of two pieces, like the torso and then the hips, I get it, but it's harder for me to like think of the shape without that specific reference to look at or trace over. Which, I mean, I am trying to use references as much as possible. I don't want to ruin my own proportional understanding before I get there, but it's just, it's just easier with three pieces instead of two. But yeah, I'm a little bit surprised so far out of all of the methods I've tried. They're all pretty much the same thing. Mostly the difference is that three versus two piece torso, but they are all kind of like the torso shape, goes inwards, the hips go outwards, and I, I guess that's obvious, but I just think it's interesting because when I was using like Pinterest guides, I kept seeing a lot of them that were like, oh, map out like the bones. Like it sounds kind of stupid, but it would be like a line instead of a shape to start with. So they would have like a line down the torso first before they mapped out the shapes. Um, if they even mapped that out before going on to the final body. I don't even know. I I don't use those anymore. Even though I have a preference for one of the tutorials out of all of them so far, I have found that I get new and different pieces of advice out of each of them. So that's really helpful because I can incorporate all those in my practice even if I don't use those exact methods. So when I made this plan for the course, I kind of thought that I would watch all the videos that I assigned myself to watch over the course of the two weeks. So half of them in the first week, half of them in the second week, and then assignments due on Friday. And for this unit, the assignment is so simple that I think that's going to be fine. And honestly, probably the next unit, same thing. However, I'm thinking that moving forward, I'm going to change the plan. So instead of doing half the videos in one week and half the videos in the other week, I'm going to do them all in the first week and then use the spare time that I have in the beginning of the next week to reinforce the methods that I liked the most so that I have more time in that second week to work on the project that I'm assigning myself, especially when it gets to the more complex units. I think that's going to be really essential and important to help me. But yeah, there's, there's, I guess, an example of an oversight that I've had. I am making this course for myself. So that's where I'm at with the assignment. Speaking of the tutorials though, I'm going to admit that I did make the playlist I'm using for this pretty much completely blind. I didn't watch any of the tutorials beforehand because I wanted to avoid influencing the way that I did things that I'm not currently learning while I'm still on other units. Um, but basically, if I'm making a scene, I don't want the composition of it to be influenced by the videos in the composition unit before I actually get there. So I want to be able to see the gradual process and the step-by-step -step improvement instead of kind of knowing what I'm going to learn beforehand. But I will say that because I didn't watch the videos beforehand, I have already had an experience where I watched one thinking it was going to be tutorial, but it actually ended up being 
the guy's process of figuring out how to learn certain poses. It was still helpful because I actually got some tips from there, but it wasn't like a method that I could copy while I was watching it because it involved a lot of tracing. Which actually brings me to my next point, because there is something I've noticed while watching these videos, which is basically that there has been one piece of advice that I've gotten multiple times, and that has been to trace to learn proportions so that you can build up the muscle memory in your hands um, by drawing directly over an image. I know that tracing is something that in like, like online, is pretty controversial because some people see it as just like plagiarism and some people see it as a method to learn. I think everyone can pretty much agree that if you claim something that you traced was done totally by you, you're just lying. But anyway, I do think that's an interesting topic and the advice from the tutorials I've watched say that you can definitely trace over photographs um, just to practice but tracing over art is something that's disagreed upon. I personally have been tracing over some photos just to get a bit of that muscle memory down and get the proportions right. And that has been a really helpful exercise. But I, I don't know when it comes to art exactly what people would agree is the right thing to do. I would think maybe if it's totally in private, it's okay, but I can also understand that it could end up being a way to copy someone else's style in the long run so I, I guess I like I understand both sides I am curious if anybody has opinions on that what they would be so feel free to leave a comment let me know if you agree if you disagree if you just don't know like me but yeah if you have an opinion I want to hear so spill it one thing I actually wanted to discuss before I got back into practicing for this unit is that I'm kind of surprised at how much simpler drawing bodies has become already. It's not that it's not a challenge at all, but I was expecting it to be far more challenging. I think that drawing bodies has always been like kind of this mystery to me, even when I was doing it more often. It was just harder to understand if I was getting it right. And I actually think that a big part of this is because I'm using video tutorials now. Because when I used to learn with books, and even when I kind of got a little bit back into this before I started filming this, and I was using tutorials I saw on Pinterest, they're just like these still pictures. And while the pictures did help, when I watch the tutorials on YouTube, I can watch somebody's hand drawing the parts, and I think that makes it easier. I can see the movements that they're doing to get to where they are. It's just something about seeing someone actually go through the motions of drawing it, rather than the still step-by-step -step pictures that makes it a lot easier. Um, either way though, this is great news for me because it does mean that the barrier into character drawing that I thought was a lot bigger seems a lot smaller. And it's not that I don't think that the rest of this is going to ever be hard, but I feel like it already kind of proves that it's not as hard as I think it's going to be, or just because it's hard, doesn't mean it's not doable. I think that could be a lesson to learn in this. So sometimes the harder thing is more worth it to do because when you do it, you actually build up that confidence, you build up that skill and you get better. Whereas if you always go with the easy route, sometimes you just don't really learn anything. But yeah, that's basically everything I have to say before I do the final tutorial, a little bit of practice and then jump into the assignment. Finished off day seven with another video tutorial, and this one was actually a little bit different. It included some pose practice, and these ones were actually much more dynamic poses than I had been doing up until this point. But I also really liked this particular method because it encouraged me to kind of map out the overall shape of the pose before actually starting to draw it with just like a line around the outside of the body and I thought that was a really helpful tip. And then because on day seven, I didn't do much outside of following along with the video tutorial, on day eight, I just pulled out my tablet again 
And I decided that I would reinforce the concepts that I had learned from that last video that I watched, as well as a couple of the previous videos. And I decided that out of all of the tutorials that I watched, I really liked that last one on day seven and the one from day three the most. So I tried using a combination of both of those methods to kind of create like something that I could see myself using in the long term. And then after mapping out the bodies, I decided to also try my hand at outlining them on another layer. So that's where the blue lines come in. I mostly just stuck with the simple poses that I had been learning throughout the unit. I tried to include all the angles that I could, so there's the side view, I did a three quarter view, and I kind of moved back and forth between those two methods that I really liked and tried to interchange different parts of them and see what felt the most natural to me. And finally, on this day, I pulled up a picture on my phone that I had of myself just to kind of reference another simple pose that was a little bit more interesting. But that was really all for the practice in this unit. And after this, I moved on to the assignment. And finally, on the Thursday of the second week, I decided to start the assignment. I thought I would only need one day to do it. So here I am using a reference from my phone and drawing it on my tablet, but I am not actually going to show it to you quite yet because I want to do that in another part of the video and that is coming up very soon. last day of the unit came up pretty fast. I've already done the assignment. It was due today, but I did it yesterday. It was fairly easy, really simple this time since it's just the first unit. All I was looking to do was create a reference sheet that I can use throughout this course so that I have something to look back on when I'm stuck in a pose. It'll show me how I go about drawing the different body parts and limbs. And basically I made it from kind of like a combination of all of the methods that I've learned so far. So this is kind of like my own combined method from what I've learned. So basically what it was, was that I was going to draw a feminine figure and a masculine figure in kind of like a simple pose. And then I also wanted to keep all the different components instead of erasing them and just having the body. So it has the initial sketch that I did to draw it first, and then it has the joints and the limbs and like each section of the body highlighted in different colors so that they're easy to see. And it's easy to see how it's broken down. For the record, to do these poses, I did use some photo references, specifically a couple that I had been using in the tracing exercises that I've been doing throughout the unit. I just wanted to keep it consistent this way. Of course though, I didn't trace these. I drew them freehand while looking at the photos. I just thought it would be good to use some familiar poses to help me get the proportions correct. And I went for poses that are fairly basic. One of them is standing but it's not just like a static standing with the arms down kind of pose like I would <laughs> normally do. And the other pose that I did was sitting down so that there was a bit of variety there. And specifically that sitting one, which was the masculine pose, I did have to do a little guesswork just because the bottom half of the legs was cut off in the photo, but I figured by now I could figure out what they look like. I'm not sure if it's 100% accurate, but I think it's good enough. So as you can see from looking at my assignment, I did use different colors to block out the pieces. I will say they aren't really like harmonious colors. This isn't the prettiest looking assignment, but I just wanted them to be able to stand out from each other. 
So if they clash a little bit, it's because I want them to be noticeable. I don't really want them to blend into each other. I just want to be able to tell the parts apart. <laughs> and then when it came to each section and the initial sketch, I did turn down the opacity a little bit so you can differentiate between the full body drawing and the different parts and the initial sketch. And for this assignment, I actually didn't outline the parts of the head that I did. You can kind of see in the sketch that there was a little bit of sectioning off there, but I actually didn't want to create those as the reference because I have a whole unit coming up, the third unit, on heads so that once I get to that unit, I can really establish what kind of method I would like to use when I draw them. But for now, I'm kind of just using my favorite of the suggestions from the tutorials that I've already watched. And speaking of the tutorials, I did actually find myself using a good combination of each technique that I learned. I really liked the three-part torso that I talked about in the mid-unit check-in, but the outlines of the bodies I'm actually pretty content with. They're not perfect, they're not professional, but I do think that they are pretty decent for like just practicing this for a couple of weeks, so I'm not really mad at how they turned out. Yeah, the background, of course, isn't anything too special. I didn't want it to be totally blank, but I also didn't want it to be too busy so that my eyes get distracted when I'm trying to look at my references. So I did just draw little flowers and then make them kind of transparent. It is what it is. In general, I would say that this assignment isn't anything too spectacular, but I am pretty satisfied with it. I think it will make a pretty decent reference. Also, since the next unit is like a part two to this anatomy subject, I think that will give me a lot of room for improvement, and by that assignment, hopefully it should be even better. Okay, and since the assignment is done now, I guess we can consider this unit finished, but before we move on to the next unit, I do want to kind of reflect on what the course experience has been as a whole. That being said, I actually, at the beginning of this unit, wrote down some questions that I thought would be good for myself to answer when I got to this point. So here they are. So the first question reflects a little bit more on the content of the unit, and it is what was difficult and what was easy. To start off with, I genuinely was pretty surprised that I didn't find this unit to be harder to get through. I really thought that because anatomy was something that I didn't properly learn, I would really struggle with and it would be a lot more frustrating than it was. But that isn't to say that this unit wasn't challenging at all. I thought that when I started the first tutorial, the side view and the three quarter view were a little bit tricky. They threw me off a little bit because I've only really drawn like frontal positions for the most part. However, once I got to that one video with the three part torso, <laughs> which I will be preaching about forever, <laughs> It actually became a lot easier to imagine the movement because when I broke it down into three parts instead of two, it just seemed a bit more fluid. And I'd also say that the proportions of the body are something to get used to. I'm not quite there yet, but I think that'll take a little bit of time to really get a hold of. All right, question two is a little bit more overall based. So this question was, how do I feel about my own drawing habits? So throughout this unit, I did actually draw every day and I didn't miss any, which comes as a bit of a surprise because in the past, I've found that my biggest obstacle when it comes to drawing is usually the expectation versus how it actually goes. And then of course, when the pressure of the expectation is kind of high, it's actually hard to draw something well. So, that will mess me up and then I end up not drawing for a very long time. As you may have seen through the sketchbook tour in the first video, usually that's what would happen. So actually having a consistent drawing practice every day this week has been a bit of progress for that. 
But I also think that part of this is because since I'm filming myself drawing every day, I have a bit of like a commitment to do it. And I know that I can't just skip the day and then get into a habit of skipping days and then I don't have any footage to share. So that's a bit of incentive to keep drawing. However, I also do know that sometimes it can be a little bit unhealthy to have that sort of pressure around something like drawing. To just be doing it like for a video can lead to burnout. So far for myself, I think that this is a bit of a positive thing, but if I notice that it's starting to become a drag, I might have to change my approach and reconsider how I do it. This is also why a lot of that time has been more screen recording than recording the pages just because it's a little bit less pressure to be on camera that way. But as for the drawing part itself, I do think that 15 to 30 minutes is pretty good. It might actually be a bit on the short side because I find myself usually going over it, but it's a nice short time frame where I can definitely get at least a bit of progress done. So I won't be changing that target, but I am, of course, allowing myself to go over that time period unless I find that it's become like a bit of a perfectionist issue and I'm just nitpicking the details, then I think it's fine to spend extra time. And so the third question is, how am I feeling about the next unit? So the next unit is very similar to this one. Actually, it's kind of like a part two to anatomy, but I'm going to focus on practicing more dynamic poses rather than the simple ones that I've mostly been doing. I do have a little bit of practice that I got from a couple of the tutorials that had slightly more dynamic poses than I was doing for most of this unit, and I still let myself practice those just to follow along with the tutorial, but this unit I'll be trying to do more of them, I'll be trying to do more of a variety and I'll be focusing on getting the proportions correct in a more complex way. And actually, since this unit wasn't as difficult as I expected it to be, I kind of think the next unit will be pretty similar. I do fully expect that the more dynamic poses will be at least a little bit tricky to get down, but now that I have a better system for drawing bodies than I used to, I think I have a better way to tackle the more dynamic and challenging poses than I did before I even started. I would actually even say that I'm pretty excited to get into the more dynamic poses because it does take me another step closer to my goal of being able to create better scenes. So I am actually really looking forward to doing this. Uh, it seems kind of daunting from the beginning, but I don't think that it's anything I can't overcome. So basically, to conclude this whole video, I would say that Unit 1 was a pretty big success. Now that I've learned how to take anatomy down into something a little bit more approachable, I do really think that I could see a genuine big improvement by the end of this course. So. I should, in theory, be able to actually draw characters the way I want to by the time this is done, and I think that's pretty exciting. And it has actually been a really long time since character drawing has been a consistent practice for me. Back when I was like 10, 11, 12, 13, even like 14 or 15, it was something I did for fun. It was something I really enjoyed doing. If I had five minutes and a blank piece of paper, you know I'm drawing a person. It's just happening. But in the last few years, trying to draw people or characters has actually been kind of a drag or something that stresses me out because I really felt like it needs to come out just right. And after a certain amount of time, why can't I draw it the way that I want to is a question that would always cross my mind, which would just make drawing honestly something kind of awful, but now that I've been coming back at it with more of like a fun approach, more of like a learning approach, it's become enjoyable again. So I think that's a much more important factor to this than any amount of visible progress that I could do. But all right, if you made it here to the end of the video with me, I really hope you enjoyed it. Any kind of feedback is really welcome in the comments since this is new to me. So with that being said, 
If you did enjoy the video, please feel free to like it. You could also subscribe to my channel. It is just the beginning of this journey for me, so there will be plenty more to come. And next week, I'm starting the next unit of this course, so hopefully I will see you there. Say hello.